pre-election tension, alt-left gay guys take. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and there's a big part of me that just doesn't want to wake up tomorrow at all. It's finally come. The end to what I have been praying to just be over for over a year, but now am more afraid of than ever. First things first, I voted for Jill Stein, though have not yet mailed in my ballot as I am such a horrible misogynist. I did not do this because I think she's all that great. She is an anti-science ideologue, as far as I can tell. Rather, I live in a state that is likely to actually get 15% or whatever in favor of her. And if that happens in a few states or whatever that exact technicality actually is, the Green Party will get a chance to debate next election. So, cool. That said, I encourage people in heavily left-leaning states to vote for Stein, as well as people in heavily right-leaning states to vote for Gary Johnson, even though he is not that great of a candidate either. We just want libertarians and Green Party candidates to have a seat at the table eventually. Now, a small hipster douchebag part of me wants to try to play it cool and detached, claiming I will only be watching for the percentage of Jill Stein votes in my state or some bullshit, but saying so would be just that. Bullshit. I am truthfully terrified of both presidential outcomes, but they will be completely different chains of events once they potentially happen. I can't say which is worse, though I will say that ultimately I am hoping deep down that Trump actually wins. If he does win, it will be rough for me. I will likely continue to lose friends as they blame me for him winning, even though one of the main reasons I supported Sanders was always that I saw this coming. My family life will likely turn upside down because everybody besides my father who claimed to want to vote for Stein the way that I am, I believe is voting for Clinton. So without saying anything about my family, if Trump wins, they'll be pissed. And again, like my friends, will likely partially want to blame me because I'll be the closest person to put blame on. I won't be particularly sad about Trump being elected and because I have advocated strongly against Clinton. More so, I'm scared I might lose my health care under a Trump presidency, which I actually need. I'll probably be able to figure things out because I've usually been successful in that, and the healthcare system does need major reform for sure, but nobody really knows what will happen with Trump in regards to healthcare. Trump's economic plans also worry me as the Reagan era basically invented our national debt and he plans to more or less mimic those policies, or so he says. Trickle-down economics does not help out the lower classes of people a whole lot, though there is definitely an argument to be made for helping out American corporations to give them a competitive edge mainly against Asian corporations. Although I am not an expert on economics by any means, from what I understand, a lot of the problems we are facing with corporate property development and management Ponzi scheme bullshit is actually powered largely by Chinese investors putting what people refer to as hot money into cities like San Francisco, New York, Seattle, Chicago, and Portland. In Oregon. They hide their money in condominium projects or whatever, which is why they keep building all those condos in big cities, but nobody really moves into them and their values keep dropping. But all of that is very complicated and I have a very limited understanding of it and need to make an entire video about it after I research it better. Finally, what worries me as an individual about Trump is that he pledged just today or so to try to get rid of the federal LGBT discrimination law, which makes it a federal offense to fire somebody from a job, deny somebody housing, or various other things simply based on sexuality or gender, if they're transgender. He wants to make it legal for Catholics to express their religion in regards to firing gays and lesbians, basically. Now, first off, I sincerely doubt he actually really wants to do that because I imagine Trump's billionaire show business life has made him a lot of homosexual friends and he does not strike me as a legit homophobe. And for all the loony things about Mike Pence's history with homophobia and stuff, he just seems like a total phony that will likely say whatever is convenient at any given time just from his demeanor. Still, what worries me most is that this will bring out a lot of hatred towards the LGBT community as it will be more culturally acceptable to hate us again, like it was during the Bush years. The proposal designed to discriminate against us will likely never be passed, but it will certainly be talked about a whole bunch. Reducing most of my community or demographic into a bunch of crybaby single issue morons, because I remember that happening when George W. Bush tried to constitutionally ban gay marriage, and that was frustrating as hell. Other than that, 
Well, building a wall sounds kind of dumb, but I don't really personally feel like it's something I care too much about. And while his views on Muslims are a bit extreme for me, I'm glad he admits that Islamic extremism and ISIS is a problem because they clearly are. Nor do I like that he's basically the world's biggest asshole, and that does kind of make me a bit nervous for him to be representing our nation. But what is the alternative? Now for Clinton. I'll say it super simply. I am legitimately afraid that if Hillary Clinton gets elected, it will be over for me as a YouTube personality very soon, because I think there is a very sincere chance that they will censor the fuck out of my channel. I'm probably below their radar for now because they have bigger fish to fry, but let's not kid ourselves. I have been blocked from posting on Facebook for calling a career feminist a bully before. Tyler Preston's channel was recently deleted, and if they are censoring Christina Hoff Summers' videos, they'll clearly censor anybody with the wrong opinion. I know better than most people the extreme lengths of corruption that Clinton Incorporated has within itself. I have dealt with it firsthand as an avid Sanders supporter while having personal friends of mine turn on me dozens of times to call me a misogynist for issues obviously unrelated to gender I never ever said anything remotely misogynistic. Truthfully, I think that they are the misogynists because basically what it boiled down to with the way that people described Clinton was that they're saying that, you know, she had to do these things that she did because she's a woman. So what they're really saying in effect is that women have to lie, cheat, betray people, do horrible things, potentially, you know, like get people assassinated and, you know, a woman has to do all sorts of awful things to succeed and they're perfectly okay with that. That sounds really fucking misogynistic to me. Anyhow, it didn't matter that I said I might be voting for Jill Stein, which ended up coming true. I did vote for Jill Stein. Haha, <laughs> I'm such a misogynist. It was clear that these people had orders. And then, lo and behold, it turns out a bunch of them were getting paid, and we know this now. Seriously, the people I knew personally who were the most relentless about arguing with me on Facebook and calling me a misogynist during the primaries had three things in common. They were all gay men, probably mostly because I know many gay men. They were all people with over a thousand friends on Facebook, and they all worked in arts, entertainment, or nightlife. If I were one of those PR firms that hired all the people to back Clinton online, those types are exactly who I would hire. And while I can't say I officially want this to happen, it would be slightly funny if Trump wins and somehow this was found to be illegal and these people got audited for income tax fraud based on the money they accepted for calling my ass a racist misogynist for supporting Sanders. Actually, screw it, I kinda want this to happen Get those motherfuckers audited for fucking with me, goddammit, on the internet. Nobody can fuck with Prince of Queens on the internet. You'll get the IRS after your fucking stupid ass. Uh, just kidding. I don't want income tax bullshit to happen to these people. That would be authoritarian and weird, but it would still be kind of funny. Aside from Hillary Clinton's seeming ability to censor all of media and seemingly social media, I could go on for about an hour with all the reasons I am terrified of Clinton. So I'll just cut to the chase and talk about the big guns. Her ridiculous perpetuation of the unholy alliance between feminism in the West and Islam and Islamic governments has been stronger than I ever anticipated, and it scares the crap out of me. I don't know if she has orders from some maniac billionaire or something that is directly telling her to use feminism as an authoritarian ideology to keep the West in a stupefied paralysis while simultaneously allying with Islam to oppress Islamic countries or what. But the fact that she is willing to take on Russia over it is just plain mental. Like, serious, mind-blowing levels of insanity. Who the fuck that isn't just following some orders is crazy enough to start talking shit at Russia like she has been? What the actual fuck is with the Tough Guy Act, Hillary? 
She's all like, I've gone toe to toe with Russia before or some shit like that, if I remember the quote correctly. No, she fucking hasn't thrown down with Russia. Is she insane? The Cold War ended before she was in Washington, as her husband Bill was just the governor of Arkansas until he was president. Saying she has squared off with Russia is like me saying I've squared off against Fedor Emelianenko. And if you are not a fan of MMA and haven't heard of him, look up a highlight reel of this Russian brawler. He'd rip me in half in his sleeve with one hand super glued to his side. Russians are not to be fucked with. And I don't think people realize that these days because we hear so little about this huge nation with about half the population of the U.S. A population which would be much larger if they hadn't had numerous civil wars where like half the population died each time. They are the type of nation that moves in troops close, signs peace treaties, and then invades the next day. They've done this before. <laughs> I was talking to a black friend of mine years ago who might have run with gangs back in the day, but he was never jumped in. And he said that you can ask every real black gangster in a big city what they are afraid of, and they'll tell you they are afraid of Russian gangsters. They're tough. They're aggressive. As a nation, they have a highly developed army, but much more so than that, they are extremely nationalistic. They don't refer to their homeland as my homeland or whatever. They call it fucking Mother Russia. If and when the inevitable ISIS terrorist attack happens in Russia, which I am fairly positive hasn't happened, it will be considered a national embarrassment. Russians won't stand for that shit. They will likely want to nuke the entire Middle East, and they will talk to China first about what they want to do, and then they'll talk to the USA about what we want to do. And if we don't say we want to do the same thing as Russia and China, which Hillary Clinton is basically saying is her plan, then I have to just tell anybody who actually still thinks Russia is our big problem simply because of a few almost certainly untrue hacker allegations that Russia and China will be our big fucking problem. All of this is why I have been suspecting all along that the typical conspiracy theory about Trump being put in the race to make Clinton look good might be the reverse of what is actually true. What if Clinton has been in the race to elect Trump? Anybody with half a brain knows not to throw down with Russia and China, and that they are far closer in proximity to the majority of ISIS recruits and therefore far more likely to want to team up for a full invasion of Syria. Furthermore, anybody who bothers to actually learn the very basic fundamentals of hacking is well aware that the first principle, aside from password cracking or whatever, I'm not, I'm not a hacker, is what is called pinging one's internet account to different internet service hosts in a chain so that people don't know where your internet service is originating from so you don't get caught. So people weren't actually caught in the Clinton hacks. They just suspect it was from Russia because reasons. So we literally have no idea who has been hacking the fuck out of Clinton. And we certainly know there's more hackers probably within the United States alone with a motive to hack her than there are in Russia. <laughs> So yeah, a vote for Clinton after all of this Russia nonsense just seems like complete lunacy to me, and I can't say it any other way. But truthfully, I've always kind of suspected that she might be ready to retire anyhow. There is a very distinct possibility that she was playing the Islamic governments for fools by accepting their money when she was pulling a bait and switch to put her longtime friend Donald Trump into office anyway so she can deny accountability for his actions when he, Russia, and China worked together to obliterate the Mideast. She and everybody who didn't vote for Trump will get to say, Don't blame me. I didn't vote for the guy who said mean things about women and Islam. While Clinton retires in luxury. That's just kind of what makes the most sense to me. And remember, I wanted Sanders. Have a good night, and I'll see you on the other side.